Howdy, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you my process on how I polish fire obsidian. Uh, but before I can start with any machines, the very first tool that I use is a bowl of water. Okay, so I'm gonna show you why I use a bowl of water to look for fire obsidian layers. Uh, so, if you look here, see if you can catch the light just right, you can see a little flash right there. So, I already looked at this earlier, but, um, so there's three layers right here. Um, the bottom two layers are, uh, they're pretty full, they go all the way through it looks like. There's a, the top layer, it's only at the corner, but it's got a lot of color. Now, the sunlight is not gonna, it's, it's kind of, kind of, probably be too bright for these layers and it's gonna not look as cool. Um, usually indoor lighting is sometimes the best for fire obsidian, but... Yeah, you can see those. Just gonna see the branded again. See here, lost it here. Okay, you got those two layers, right? But if I use this bowl of water, let's go ahead and dunk it in. Hands a little oily I'm from working on the saw earlier. But now I can see those um, those different layers much better now. On the other side here, so you can see some uh, flashes here on the top. We're not going to care about this stuff here on the top. We want to get down to the layer that's right, right down here where my thumbnail's at. Now this sunlight does not do the layer justice, but oh, here it is. There's that flash. There it is. So we want to try to get down to that layer. Uh, since that layer, the, the material on top of where that color band's at is super close and it's going to require a very steady hand and um, a lot of patience to be able to grind down to that point and polish it without losing that, that, uh, that layer because it only takes just a mere second of being on a wheel for too long and then that color's gone forever. Okay, so the plan is we're going to move um, the rind here all, all the way around the surface, get kind of um, a somewhat matte finish, that way I can see where the layers are at, and then that, that way I can use a pencil to mark where the layers are at and kind of keep track of where I'm grinding down. And then uh, from there, we'll see what areas we need to polish. So let's do the grinding first. So I'm going to start with this 180 grit hard diamond wheel, and these machines always require water, and I've, I've mentioned that in previous videos. Um, just because if, if I don't use water, it's going to ruin these wheels, and these wheels are very expensive to replace. Um, so I'm going to start with the 180 grit. Um, I'm not going to use the 80 grit because the 80 grit is too aggressive and will just destroy this piece. So we're going to start with this one and then go from there. Okay, so the only part I did not really grind down, or the only two parts really, is uh, this face right here, which I need to leave open so I can see where I'm at. Because they can kind of see a little bit. The, the layers I'm going for are right down here, and right there is where uh, I need to watch out for. So this whole area on top needs to go. And this back side here, there's a layer right in here, toward the bottom, that I'm going to attempt to get to, and uh, see if I can bring out that flash. So the next step I'm going to be using is um, going to the, the somewhat worn 100 grit uh, wet dry sandpaper, this is a water optional machine in my shop, um, but tonight I'm going to be using water, and I'm basically just going to be sanding down um, parts of this uh, rock here to get rid of the marks from the 100A grit uh, hard diamond wheel, and this is going to allow me to mark where I need to stay within, and to kind of get an idea of where the layers are at and how much room I have to work with. Okay, so I went through and I marked the layers that we're going to work down towards. And this layer is the fire layer, and this is all waste. And same thing with it back here, that's the fire layer, this is all waste. And extends right about here, that's all waste. This is going to be the easy side. This one's going to be the tricky side, because right here is our fire layer. Which comes to right about here. The bottom line is the fire layer, 
and this top side is the waist. And there's not much room for errors in here, along this side here. And especially back here. Is that one of my layers? Yeah, okay. So that's, I believe that's the fire layer there. And that's the overburden right above it that I need to watch out for. Because then I run a chance of going through that layer. So, those are the lines I have to stay within. Let's get to work. For the easy side, I'm going to use the 180 grit again for the hard diamond wheel. And then when I get down to closer to that layer, I'm going to start very carefully going over to... Um, the hard diamond on the genie machine just because the wheels it's it's fairly worn and so it's going to be a lot smoother transition when i go from the hard wheel to the soft mesh wheels and it'll be easy for polishing later on ground away the top excess layer of the easier half after ground away i decided to look at it again with the pencil and the layer that we're aiming for there is actually as the it goes deeper into the stone here so I had to redraw where I need to go. See where my pencil line is right there. So we have a little bit more excess to get rid of. And so we have to get rid of more of this excess, excess on this side. And what I'm doing is I'm grinding down at an angle on the edge first. And then I remove the high spots after that. So let's uh, just keep working on this stone. Okay, I cleaned it up a little bit more with the grinder. And then just enough with the 100 grit sandpaper so I can kind of show you the results here. So there's, there's a reason why I grind at an angle first, so I can try to find that layer. That way I can see where I'm going. You can start seeing more of the color of that flash now. And it allows me to know where to stop, so I can start moving the, um, the, the high spots, so I can grind down to that layer. So I have the edges figured out where I wanna, want them to be. And now I can really kind of start working this piece a little bit better. And at the same time, see if this light will show up better. See that shadow right there? That gray one? That is another layer that was above this one. So we want to get rid of that. So this has a, its full potential to be as vivid as possible. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to be using the 180 grit wheel just to go down a hair more. Uh, I don't go down on too much further, just enough to get rid of... Um, some of the excess up above it, and there is uh, that kind of like that hazy layer that we want to get rid of. And then from there, we'll take over to the 100 grit to kind of clean it up a little bit. And then from there, we'll take it to the Genie to um, get ready for polish. Okay, so this piece is done with uh, these two machines, and it's going to go to the Genie here next uh, for the more fine tuning of the sanding process. But just look at that. I mean, the camera's having a hard time really wanting to focus on this. This is why this stuff is so hard to get a good photograph because it just doesn't want to be photographed. But this piece is not done yet. This is just one side. Okay, so I forgot to hit record. Silly me. That's okay. So I worked this back piece a little bit. We got the fire layer exposed here and here on the edge. And this layer right in here is what we need to get rid of. And I kind of ran into one of what I expected to run into is that these layers were not uniform. So they're just kind of just kind of I think let's see here. Yeah, they're they're a little off. Just just a hair. Just enough for me to kind of figure out my next move here. But the goal is to get rid of this excess layer. So for this stage, we're going to be using the Genie. Okay, so we are more or less kind of done with the 280 grit wheel. And I'll explain that here in a second. We're about to move on to the 600 grit wheel. And after the 600 grit wheel... We'll go from the 1200 and we ignore this wheel altogether because I don't like using this wheel. I've used this on Obsidian before after going from this step to this step and it has left some scratches on the surface. So typically from here, it should be good enough to go to polishing wheel. Um, 
and the reason why I said I'm not done with this one just yet, because if I am on the 600 grit wheel and I find any scratches that I can't quite get out, I have to go back a step. And I will keep going back and forth until I can have a product that's good enough to go to the 1200 here. And then from there, we'll go to the carpet polishing wheel. We're going to go ahead and start on the 600 grit wheel and see if we can get these... Uh, extremely fine scratches out from the 280 grit and see if it'll be good enough to go from there to the 1200. Okay, so I'm mostly done. I'm just doing a quality check now. Uh, this piece, I think, should be good enough to go to polish. And if there are any issues, it, it will show after I get done polishing it. And worst case scenario, if there is something wrong with this piece, I can always come back to either the 600 or 1200, sand it down really quick, and then go back to polish. Not a big deal. Um, but yeah, I didn't see any too many issues with this, this side here. I'll zoom in a little bit. Not too bad. So that, that side passes. And here is the other side. Now, this is very hard to get a good photograph as far as looking for scratches. Um, and I don't, think, I don't recall if I ever really showed um, this part of the process before or not. So what I'm doing is I'm using the light to kind of help find any scratches that might be on the surface before I go to polish. And again, if I find the scratches at polish that need to come out, I can always come back a couple steps and get those scratches out. Let me see here. So we might have a scratch here. Oh, well, there's not really a, oh, maybe one there. So these are not from the saw. These are um, uh, scratch marks from uh, whatever various stage that might have been in. Uh, in this case, this probably came from one of the 600 wheels. So that is why it's very difficult to polish obsidian because sometimes you might have a, a really good wheel and all it takes is one brief second to have a piece of debris or something end up on the wheel that's going to cause a large scratch. So um, this is kind of the stage that I go through and look for any possible scratches before I go to the polishing wheel. Um, just, just to try to save a little bit of time. Uh, and sometimes, to be honest, uh, even the, the smallest of scratches, if they're not too visible, I can take it to polish. And sometimes, not always, but sometimes, it comes out because I am adding a lot of weight when I'm polishing a stone on the wheel. So I'm going to spend some more time uh, looking at the stone really quick before I take it to the polishing wheel. Okay, we are at the polishing station now. This is a Berber carpet polishing pad. What I'll be using today is a cerium oxide from Gordon Glass Company. That is the stuff that I use all the time. And uh, I need to add a little bit of water into my slurry here to kind of help loosen that up a little bit. It's been a few days since I've used it. And then we'll turn on the wheel, uh, add some water on there. Not too much, but not too little. And then start polishing the stone and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So, uh, oh, before, before that. As I'm working the stone, if I feel that this is starting to grip the stone a little bit or if it's starting to dry out I will spritz some more water on there just enough to kind of wet in the wheel and just keeps the cerium oxide from drying out on the stone as I'm working it um, so let's go ahead and get this rolling all right this piece is done you guys ready that that is just beautiful i had no idea that that layer would actually extend throughout the whole piece because i was looking at that layer right there 
where the green and yellow is at. That one was very prominent. But just to see it go throughout the whole piece is just beautiful. So those, those circular marks that you're seeing right there, those are not cut marks, those are not saw marks. Those are actually uh, layers of the obsidian that were sitting just above this layer. That's beautiful. And there is a second layer down below. Not much I can do about it since our focus was this top layer. And then we have the back side of this piece. Look at that. Just look how bright that is. So you can zoom in a little bit. Yeah. That's the stuff. Yeah, I will say that this turned out pretty good. Let me know what you guys think. I hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope that you learned something new. And if you guys have any questions, let me know. I'll answer them the best I can. But that's going to do it for today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Rock on.